Chapter 2. Project Creation and Management. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will be discussing some of the basics for creating and developing projects using Lattice Radiant. Chapter 2 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Creating and Opening Projects, the general process for creating Radiant projects and opening existing projects are covered. In section 2 of the chapter, Managing Project Files, we will introduce Radiant's File List tab and discuss the basics of using it for file management. In the third section of the chapter, called IP Catalog, we will discuss Radiant's IP Catalog and how it can be used to download and install IP. In the fourth section of the chapter, Implementing IP, the general process for generating an IP component and instantiating it in a design are reviewed. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, Using Source Templates, we will discuss Radiant Source Templates tab, and how it can be used to use Source Templates in Radiant projects. Chapter 2, Section 1. Creating and Opening Projects. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing the general process for creating a new project in Radiant. Additionally, the various ways that existing projects can be opened will also be covered. There are four ways a new Radiant project can be created. The first way to create a new project is to use the new project icon in the main view of the start page window. The second way to create a project is to select the new icon in the toolbar and then project from the dropdown that appears. The third method for creating a project is to select file from the menu bar. From the dropdown that appears, select new and then project. The fourth and final way to create a new project involves keyboard shortcuts. Pressing Ctrl, Shift, and also opens the new project creation window. The process for setting up a new project in Radiant is the same, regardless of the method used used to create it. The next few slides in the module will guide users through the new project setup process. The first page users will see in the new project wizard window is the new project page. This page details what the new project wizard is used for. There are no selections for users to make here, so they should click next whenever they are ready to continue. The second page in the new project wizard is called project name. This page contains several options that control how a new project is generated. The first thing that should be configured in this window is the name field. Whatever users enter here is what the generated Radiant project will be named. One important thing to remember when selecting a project name is that only alphanumeric characters, like numbers or letters, and underscores are allowed. The second thing that should be configured is the location of the project. This can be done by selecting a new folder for a project using the Browse button. If the Create Subdirectory option is checked, a new folder will be generated in that location. The name of this generated folder will match the name of the project. The bottom portion of this page controls the settings for the active project implementation. Here users can change the name for the default project implementation. By default, the implementation will be called impl1. The default implementation can be named anything. The selection here has no impact on the actual development process of a project. Click next to continue the new project setup process once all these fields have been populated. The third page in the new project wizard is called Add Source. In this page, users can add files to begin their new project with using the Add Source button. In order to copy the files being added to the actual project, the Copy Source to impl Implementation Source Directory option should be checked. If this option is not checked, any files added in this window will not be added to the new project's directory and will instead be referenced from their source. Another useful feature of this window is the Create Empty Constraint Files option at the bottom. Selecting this will generate blank pre- and post-synthesis constraint files for Radiant. It should be noted that all selections in this page are optional. It is still possible to add and create new files to a project after it has been created. Once again, click Next when finished configuring this window. The next step in the new project setup process is to select the device user's plan on programming. The first step towards selecting a device is to select a family, and then device. Once the correct device has been selected, 
The next thing users should do is select the correct part number for their device. Doing this will populate the pack package, operating condition, and performance grade fields. It is crucial that the last eight characters of the part number match those on the actual device. The specific part number of a device can be found on its chip or in its data sheet. The final step in the device selection process is to select the performance grade for the device. If the part number was selected first, the number of the grade will be pre-populated. From the drop-down, users can select either high performance or low power. Click Next once the correct device and device settings have been selected. The device user select here can also be modified later on in Radiant. This page contains the last settings users will configure in the new project setup process. Here users will select which synthesis tool to use for their project. The two available selections in this window are Lattice's LSE and Synopsys's Simplify Pro Synthesis Engines. The synthesis tool that is selected for a project that can be changed later on as well. Once users are satisfied with their synthesis tool selection, they should click Next. The project information page is the last step in the new project setup process. This page contains information about all of the selections made for the project being created. Once users have reviewed this information and verified that everything is correct, they should click finish to generate their new project. Now that we've discussed the ways a project can be created, we're going to quickly review the ways an existing project can be opened. There are four ways users can open an existing Radiant project. The first way to open an existing project is to use the open project icon in the main window of the start page. The second method is to select the open icon from the Radiant toolbar, then select project. The third method for opening a project is to select file from Radiant's menu menu bar, then open, then project. The fourth way to open a project is to use the keyboard shortcut. Control, Shift, O. Aside from the methods mentioned in the previous slide, another way existing projects can be opened is to open a recent project. By default, the four most recently opened Radiant projects will be available for selection. With that said, there are two ways users can open a recent project. The first way to open a recent project is to select the project's name from the recent project list, which can be seen from the figure on the slide. Another way to open a recent project is to select file from Radiant's menu bar, and then recent projects from the drop-down list of options. Doing this will expand a list with the four most recently opened projects for users to select from. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, Select the video titled Section 2.2, Managing Project Files.